Welcome to my channel, Purposeful Play, where I talk about all things early childhood education. I'm Danielle, and I am a 4K teacher in Wisconsin, and today I want to talk to you about loose parts, what they are, where you can get them, or how you get them, and what you can do with them. So let's get started. lots of videos today um, and I've pulled out some materials I mean everything is put away in my classroom so I didn't want to take out too much because then I have to put it all back but um, I'm gonna share with you some samples or examples of loose parts so the first thing is items in nature so I don't have to really show you these things but you don't have to pay for them and they're easy to find depending on where you live. So you could collect up acorns and sticks and rocks and seashells and um, little tree cookies. You can get a branch and then cut up pieces of the tree so you have those little tree cookies. Hang on, I'll show you what I mean by that. Here it is, a tree cookie. This was actually given to me. There was a, a branch that was given to me and um, a parent had cut up a whole bunch of these tree cookies so um, those are loose parts that you can or samples examples of loose parts that you can find in nature I know there are more but those are just a few that I can think of now another way to get um, a collection of loose parts is by asking the kids to bring stuff in so what I do I didn't do it this past year just I mean with COVID and coming back to school in person in February we just we didn't um, is in the past I have sent home a little tiny canvas bag it's a little like this big I got an oriental trading I will link it down below it's got a little handle and I write in sharpie you know Susie's math bag and the kids once a week bring their math, math bag home and then in their bag they're asked to put up to 10 items now this is a small bag so the items are pretty small and there are a couple rules they have to fit in the bag they cannot be a toy and they the items have to stay at school forever and that's how I get a collection of more loose parts so I'll give you a couple examples of things that kids bring in and I usually send home a list of you know examples of things that kids can bring in so that families know kind of what I'm asking for tops on water bottles tops from um, applesauce containers I don't have any in this jar, but milk tops, um, you know, things that they're going to throw out anyways. They could bring in, what other things have they brought in? I've had kids bring in straws, or they've taken a straw and cut it into 10 pieces, um, cotton balls and Q-tips, and um, broken crayons. Um, I've had some friends bring in like a crazy ball, or I call them a crazy ball, but a bouncy ball. Um, so it can be anything that they want, anything that they don't want anymore at their home. Really, they just open up their junk drawer and pull through and pull out 10 things. It's, it's interesting the kind of collection of items you can get. Um, and then there are small items that also that you can purchase if you have the money to do that. You don't have to, but you can. Um, you can buy rocks. You can buy, um, a lot of teachers like those, um, crazy here, um, mini erasers. So sometimes those are fun depending on which ones you can find. So you can find those at like the dollar spot at the Target once in a while. Um, I love gems, um, you know, like those little round like rocks. You can buy those at, um, at the dollar store. And um, I found these ones on, on Amazon. So there's these little um, gems that are, they're plastic, but they're all like fall um, leaves and fall flowers. Um, you can also get buttons and um, I'm trying to think of what else we had at our art center this year. Q-tips, I mean, just anything. Great spot for it, you to find them is the dollar store. And before I give you some ideas of what you can do with them, I wanted to show you um, how you can store them. So one way is just by having a plastic bin and putting all of them in the plastic bin to make, putting them in your cupboard and bringing them out as you need them. And then another way is in these little plastic jars. So I have these jars. I got them at the Dollar Tree. 
um, they're plastic. The, the lid is fairly easy for the kids to get off and on. And you can set these out on a shelf and have all the things available to the kids in the jars. Or you can take them and put them on the table um, when you need them. Now what else do I wanna, before I go into ideas, I think I'll just go into the ideas and then show you some other things I put out with the small parts, the, the loose parts. So when the kids bring in their math bag, we do a lot of um, small group activities with their stuff before we put them out for the kids to play with. So we have these black, um, can't no, they're canvases, like painting canvases. They're about, you know, this, this, that big. Um, and I covered them with black felt, stapled it on. And so it's a nice little black tray almost. Um, and the kids dump out their 10 items and we take turns going around just talking about the 10 or five or however many things that they brought. And I never know how that small group is gonna go because it just depends on what the kids bring in. So if a, one kid brings in, um, they brought in tops and balls. Well that, we can talk about comparing like a sphere to a circle, actually this is a cylinder, but um, talking about the differences in um, those things. So, or maybe one friend bought everything that's blue, another friend bought everything that's yellow, or um, you know, we can talk about making a pattern with that. Like, hey, I notice if we put these, line them up like this, what do you see? So it, it always just depends on what the kids bring in. That's kind of how the, that small group grows. Um, after we've done that, when the kids bring their math bags in, um, we use them for counting. We use them for a little math game, um, like laying them out like putting five items down and then taking some away and asking how many are missing. Well, if there are two, you know, if there's three left here, how many do you think I have hiding in my hand? So we call that game what's missing or how many are missing, sorry. And then also playing a game of what's missing. So on our little black tray, we'll have a bunch of stuff and um, not too many things, but just a bunch of stuff. And the kids have to, we take turns taking one thing away and then they have to use their memory to say okay what is missing um so that's a fun one and then after you play that in small group you can put them out on the table and they can play that with their friends um i spy is another one you take some items in the small group that they brought in with their mac in their math bags and you use the black mats and you um play i spy i spy something that is shaped like a sphere i spy something that has four corners I spy something that starts with the letter D. So you can do all kinds of stuff with the items that the kids brought in. And then again, that will go to a center. Another thing you can do is putting out a variety of items in a tray like this. This one I got at Goodwill, but you can buy something similar at the Dollar Tree. Um, and it's a dollar. And you just put out a variety of stuff and some play-doh and the kids create whatever they want with the stuff so if you put out you know some play-doh with some sticks and cotton balls and um i'm trying to think of other things buttons you know they could end up making a snowman or a monster or really a person anything they want a robot um so they can do a play-doh tray that's one idea another idea is to put them um, a bunch of small items or loose parts in the block center. And the kids can use them to create, you know, a building or a house, or I love putting animals with them too, and they can create um, like a little small world play space. Um, another thing I haven't mentioned, um, I like those little battery operated tea lights, and they put those in the block center too with um, like fake leaves and rocks and um, seashells and animals, and the kids can make these little homes and stuff, and then they can turn on their little lights so they have these flickering lights in their homes. Those are so much fun. Another thing you can do is just put out the stuff and see what happens. So I sometimes put out, these are a couple of trays I call them. Um, you know, I put out a bunch of loose parts and something like this. And maybe even some tweezers so we can work on some fine motor skills. So um, you could put out a jar of things, several jars of things. Um, you can put things in just a little basket and see what happens. And you might find that, you know, the kids put them in a pattern or maybe they put all row of all pink things and a row of all green things. Um, this was, from a package. I don't know what it was from. I don't remember, but 
I'm not gonna get rid of this one because I super duper love this one. Um, I also have this, this one has been around for a couple of years, but uh, it's a plasticky thing. I don't know what, what it was, but this one is a lot of fun. I have put this and this in the sensory bin with uh, pom-poms and tweezers and the kids have just had a blast with them and I could play with those for days. So just an easy idea of what you can do with the loose parts. Um, I really like having the activities open-ended. So, you know, there's not like a set activity that I'm thinking of in my mind. It's just whatever they do with it. And then um, you can see where it goes. And of course, if you're sitting with the kids, you can be talking about things and you can be like, hey, I wonder what would happen if we did this? Or, you know, what if I put these here and these ones here or whatever. Um, I have a couple of these. These I got in Dollarama in Canada. They had, this one had these little tiny wooden butterflies, like a little stack of wooden butterflies and flowers in each one, which are also have become um, some great loose parts. They're in a jar up in the cupboard. Um, so those are fun. You don't have to put the wooden pieces out. You can put out anything. And then I also have this one that came with um, little wooden letters, like all the letters of the alphabet and which also have become loose parts to play with. So just another tray idea that you could put out with um, some small items and see what happens. Okay, a couple of more ideas. I got these cork boards at Ikea. Um, you don't have to have these, you could really put out a square piece of paper, but I liked the circle because um, we were learning about emotions and how you can tell how somebody's feeling by looking at their face. So I put out a bunch of loose parts, um, like pipe cleaners and straws and yarn, um, just in one of these kinds of things. I put out gems. Um, and then also little picture cards that had kids with um, different emotions on the cards. So the kids could choose to make a little face on here. And then, you know, if a teacher's sitting with them, they can talk about how they know how that person, person that they made is feeling by looking at the face that they made. I found these tiny little boxes again at the dollar store, Dollarama in Canada, which I can't wait to go back soon. That's where my family is. so. Um, I mean, I, I would love to see them, but I also kind of want to go to Dollarama too to get some new and exciting, fun stuff. But these little tiny boxes that have little lids. Uh, I don't have a lid on this one. Oh yeah, here's, here's the square one. But are they not so cute and tiny to fit all kinds of neat little things? So I just put a whole basket of these out without the tops on. Um, I put out, I, they love them with pom-poms. So they try to put the pom-poms in here as many as they can. So great for counting. Like how many do you think will fit in there? Great for predicting, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, or they could, you know, put all the green ones in the green boxes, all the red ones in the red boxes, um, whatever they want to do. They could stack them as well. Some great fine motor, um, all kinds of good stuff doesn't have to be something specific that I think of it's really whatever they come up with and then the conversations that you have with them when you're playing with them okay I think I'm gonna share one more that I really really loved um, and I think I'm, if I can find a picture I'm gonna put it right there if I can't I, I apologize but I had um, you know my black mats or trays or whatever I keep talking about. It's a canvas that I staple on black felt. I love them. I highly recommend doing them. Um, actually, Deborah Stewart from um, teachpreschool.org, I think she does white ones, which would get so dirty, I think, too fast. Um, but she gave me that idea. She also did the math bags, which is where I got the idea for the math bags. Um, so I have the, um, the tray, those little mats the boards out, a couple at a table. I put out these little gems, a bunch of all kinds of different, um, these colorful gems. Um, they're all fall colors. And then um, I put out a basket with um, sticks or twigs from outside. And the kids created the most beautiful, like trees and branches with all these lovely things on them. So, um, I'll put a picture, I really hope I can find one because they were like works of art. They were so, so pretty. I do wanna say again that I'm gonna share with you a link to um, 
a book called Loose Parts. Um, it's actually, there's three or four books in the series. They're great, they have great pictures. They have just so many ideas of what you can do with loose parts. Um, but I will put a link down below so you can check out those books. But I just wanna say again, like you do not have to buy these items. You can get them from nature and you can have the kids bring in, or you can collect yourself all the things that you don't want anymore that you were gonna throw anyways. Um, to get a collection of loose parts. And then if you wanna have like sorting trays or ways to store them, um, again, look for boxes and bins and jars that maybe you find at um, like the thrift stores or that come in your packages or whatever. So you don't have to purchase a lot of stuff. And that kind of brings me to my last thing that I wanna share. And I know I've said this before, I am not a fan of those little plastic things that you can buy at the teacher's store. There's like a blue one, a red one, a yellow one, a pink, a purple one, and whatever. They come in like five or six colors. Um, they're cute and they're fun to play with, but there's not a lot that you can do with them. You can count them. You can sort them by color. Sometimes you can sort them by size. Um, you can play games with them, but they're not as open-ended and endless ideas as junk, loose part junk. Oh, another thing I thought about, sorry, this is a total side chant tangent, um, screws and nuts and bolts and that kind of stuff. I've had a lot of kids bring those in too. Paper clips, bobby pins. Oh, I keep thinking of, maybe I'll make a list and I'll put that down below so you guys can have, have a list of all the loose parts I'm thinking of. Okay, go back to the plasticky things. They're not as open-ended as the junk. That's really, that's my point and the junk is free. So don't buy those plastic things. Um, don't tell the teacher stores that I'm telling you this. Don't tell them. I was looking through my Instagram page and found a bunch of pictures that had um, loose parts in them. So here's one where the kids can make an insect with all kinds of cool stuff in the sorting tray. And then this is oh, the one that I already mentioned with the pom-poms and the little boxes just put out for them to play with. And here the kids could play a game. And in the jars, there were little mini erasers. And then here a child just had Q-tips on our board and were just was creating some kind of pattern. This, the kids were painting with some of the loose parts, which were some um, nuts and bolts. And then this was also put out on one of our black boards and the kids were just doing whatever with them. Here we've got some fake flowers and there's some rocks in there as well to create some little small world. And on our light table, we had pictures of flowers and the kids were creating designs with those little glass beads. And then, oh, my favorite, I love those letters. Some little guy was writing his name with the letters. And then here the kids were challenged to make a flower using whatever they could from our um, loose parts jars. And then this friend was um, creating letters with our sticks. And here is a collection of items. These are the ones that I left in Colorado, but all brought in by the kids. If you have any other ideas, I love for you to share. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments down below and give it a thumbs up if you like this video. And thanks for watching. Have a happy day.